not making a meatloaf tonight, so I thought I'd bore you guys with a video about it. Um, I grabbed some bacon and some uh, piece of pork roast and some hamburger meat out of a freezer, and you know this is gonna be my meatloaf for tonight. Now, we like to buy these pork loins uh, when we find them on sale and cut them up into chunks and throw them in the freezer because they're real good for. We like to use them for making meatloafs or. Um, you know, we uh, we can roast them up, or we can um, slice them up and throw them on the grill, or we can make country-style sausage real easy with them. So we keep a bunch of them in the freezer usually, and I got some uh, some good fatty, you know, tasty slab bacon that I'm uh, just going to kind of cut up, and I'm going to grind with this pork to start out with. And, uh, you know, you can use any kind of meat that you have. It doesn't really matter. It's, they all taste a little bit different, but... Um, I'm starting by just grinding up this, um, you know, this pork with the bacon here, and um, I just have like that real coarse sausage um, plate on the grinder right now to to start with. But it just kind of, you know, gets it gets the flavors mixed together and stuff, and um, gets it down to a point that I can work with it. And, um, you know, it's really, like I said, it doesn't matter what you put in these things. Um, they all come out good. They taste a little bit different. But this uh, this grinder I've got, I think I got back around 1980. And um, it's been a real workhorse thing. Uh, you know, it sounds like it's working hard. And it puffs out some smoke every once in a while and stuff. But it just keeps on going. So I got the pork ground up. And then I'm going to take off the uh, coarse plate. And you can see that it's just got like real big openings and I'm going to just replace it with the uh, the hamburger style finer plate to um, mix everything together with next. Yeah, I grabbed a lot of meat tonight so it looks like I'm going to be eating meatloaf for a while. So there's the, uh, I took and I'm throwing in a, um, a pound of ground uh, beef just to mix in with it and give it a little bit more flavor and um, a little bit more fat in there and stuff. So got them mixed up pretty good and now I'm just gonna run it through the uh, the grinder one more time with that fine plate on to really get a nice um, nice fine texture to it now in the past I've uh, tried running the veggies in through the grinder with it and stuff but we really didn't like the way you just kind of mushed them up and uh, kind of you didn't really mix the flavors together too much and you lost the texture of it and stuff so I just like to keep the uh, the meat part of it separate at this point and just grind that all up. And, you know, there you can see it just looks like hamburger coming out. And it really does come out good if you do have a little venison to throw in there too. But um, So there it is. Uh, there's the meatloaf ground meat to start out with. And then some stuff from the garden last year. First I'm going to start with some shallots. Um, these are just some of the ones that I grew last year out of the root cellar. Um, they have a little bit milder flavor than onions when you use them for cooking. Uh, you can you can throw onions in too, or you know you can throw some garlic. You can throw whatever you want in it, really, depending on the flavor you're looking for. But I like to just grab a handful of shallots and um, put them in there just for kind of like a light oniony flavor. So I'm just going to take and um, slice them up. and then just throw them in with the meat and um you know i'm getting i'm getting down on them too i uh i always keep like a, another batch to plant this summer um hopefully it'll get warm enough soon to start the garden and get some more going but um these are real easy to grow and they store well and then we keep uh our peppers frozen peppers and um we put these slices usually in like Ziploc bags after we break open the bigger packages. And I just grab a handful of them out of the freezer. Um, these are the uh, the sweet banana peppers and the Jimmy Nardello um, Pimiano peppers mixed up here. And they do give it a real nice flavor also. So just kind of chop them up. And I, I usually try to work with them when they're still frozen. Uh, they're much easier to deal with. So throw them in there. And then uh, these are also carrots from the garden last year. We're getting down to the end now. We've just got these uh, bunch of these little guys left. So pretty soon we'll be out of them. But um, they do really store well. And, um, you know, they retain the flavor and sweetness and everything. So it's a good treat to be able to use them uh, basically for the whole winter. So same thing here. I'm just going to cut them up into... Um, 
small enough pieces so that they'll cook right through with what before the meatloaf is done. Um, you make too big a piece and sometimes they'll stay a little bit hard. So I just chop them up small and throw them in with the meat there. And that's basically um, that's basically it. Uh, now we're just going to go back and add uh, a couple other things. Um, I throw in some eggs. With a batch this size, I'm going to throw in two eggs. A uh, smaller batch, I'll use one. And you know, a larger batch, I'll use three. And I'm going to just squirt in a little bit, little bit of ketchup to add some extra moisture to it. And a little more flavor to it. Throw a couple breadcrumbs in there too. Um, they kind of help hold everything together. And then a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Sprinkle it in on top of there. Then uh, comes the messy part. Just take your fingers and um, mix everything up real good. Uh, just you know, just keep going through until everything's distributed evenly in the meat. Takes a little while. It's a messy job, but somebody's got to do it. And then we're going to throw some potatoes in with it too. Um, you can use any type of potato that you have. We just so happen to have a bag of these left down in our root cellar. So we're going to use the red potatoes. And you just have to cut them up small enough so that they'll actually um, cook in the time that the uh, meatloaf will cook in. If you try to make them too big, sometimes they won't cook all the way through. So best to, to you know size them accordingly. And put them in a pan to... Throw a little bit of olive oil on them just to kind of help them brown up a little bit on the edges. And then I like to put some uh, crazy salt on them. I pretty much use that uh, Jane's mixed up crazy salt on everything that I cook. So, um, yeah, there it is. So I'll just sprinkle a little bit of that on them too. To, it helps give them a little flavor and helps pull some of the moisture out of them as they cook. And then I just, you know, I got them all mixed up. Um, fire up the oven and uh, we set it on 350. And now I decided instead of making one big one here, I'm just going to make two uh, smaller ones so that they'll cook thoroughly through and, you know, cook a little quicker. And um, So I just took that mixture and broke it in half. Uh, must have been close to five pounds of meat with everything thrown in there probably so you know it's going to be two nice meatloaves so they you can see how they stick together real nice and um, shape up nice and uh, I could have used a larger pan but you know that's the side pan that, that I chose so and then I'm just going to throw the uh, potatoes in around the meatloaf so it truly is a, a one, one pan meal here and um you know, that's about it. It's a it's a real simple to make meal, and like I've said all along, you can put whatever you want in it, and um, they always come out tasting good. So uh, we're gonna have some of our canned beans from last summer or the summer before. There looks like the date on them is. So um, you know, I just throw it in the oven, and uh, we let it bake for I think it was about an hour. Um, my wife's going to mix up the topping for it now. So she's just taking some, just squirting some ketchup in a bowl to start with. And then just a dab of the um, Worcestershire sauce. She just, uh, you know, just pours a little bit in. And we don't do any measurements on this. So each one comes out a little bit different, but that's what makes it exciting. So um, then we make a, um, a zucchini sweet relish in the summer with our extra zucchinis. And um, that's really great on top of these. So she'll throw a little bit of that into there. And um, also we make a roasted red pepper spread that many people ask, you know, ask me what we used it for. And this is one of the things we just throw some of that in there too for the topping. And that has a really rich peppery flavor to it. Um, so it's a real nice mix of, uh, you know, of all the sweet and sour on there on top of it. I just mix that up a little bit. And then it's uh, time to pull the meatloaf out and check it. Make sure it's uh, cooked. Now, seeing how we're using pork, we usually overcook them, really. We like to cook it like 165, 170 when we're using pork in the mix. Um, I guess I grew up where my mother was worried about trichinosis years ago and that no longer exists, but I still cook it, overcook it. So, you know, it looks like they're up at like a little bit over 170, so they're really done now, but um, we're just going to spread that sauce on 
a little bit. And um, see, my wife's got a little bit of a tremor there, but I just tell her that it's a good shaker to keep everything mixed up in the bowl while she's spreading. So, um, you know, get we uh, this this only takes a couple minutes to put back in the oven to uh, take and just heat it up and make sure that, you know the sauce starts to melt into the top of the meat. So we, we also did um, drain a little bit of the fat in the bottom of the pan, which I just didn't get to hit the button on the camera to get a picture of it. But there it is, ready to go back in the oven. Um, so now we're just going to throw that back in for a couple minutes to, to get that topping on it hot. And then we're going to throw the beans in a, just in a bowl in the microwave and just, you know, heat them up for, to go with the dinner. We really do like this new uh, microwave. It's uh, really nice having everything up at eye level and stuff. It, it has worked out good. It doesn't take up too much room. So there we are. Everything's all ready and uh, time to come out of the oven. And it sure is nice to have this nice new clean oven to show in the videos instead of that nasty old one that we had. <laughs> so, you know, there it is. All done. Ready to go. The uh, potatoes are just a little slightly browned and the... Uh, the meatloaves are, you know, cooked thoroughly, and I'm just gonna pick one out there and uh, slice it now. Um, looks like I'll be eating meatloaf for the next couple of days, but I really love it as a leftover, so that's a good thing. So there it is. Um, you can see it's got a, a real nice texture to it, um, and the vegetables by just you know chopping them and putting them in their hole, they really. Uh, they really do add a lot more flavor, I think, and um, you can really taste them a lot better as you eat it. So, you know, it's just a simple one-pot dinner there, and uh, basically, you know, a lot of it's from last year's garden or the year before. So, um, you know, I just thought I'd share this with you, and thanks for watching. Please subscribe.